Warning. The following games are intended for mature audiences over the age of 18. These games may contain some material that many parents would not find suitable for children and may include intense violence, sexual situations, coarse language, and suggestive dialogue. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello there everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Earth Defense Force 5. I am your host Alexander Frost and this is episode 4. I will last week <laughs> Hello there everyone and welcome to Let's Play Earth Defense Force 5. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is episode 4. And when last we left off, we finally got to see some of the awe and majesty that is the Air Raider and all of its air support capabilities. This time, though, we are going to see exactly how useful someone with a jetpack is. Basically, another form of close air support. The Wing Diver, an all female unit. Uh, primarily because jetpacks and, well, ladies are lighter than men, so generally speaking, that works better with, uh, you know, jetpacks. Or so Japan says. I don't know. I don't judge these things. The Wing Diver is a very nimble unit, very fast, the quickest on the battlefield, and excels at being able to get around grabbing items and just generally zipping in and out of danger. They're very lightly armored, however, and as you can see, start with a considerably lower amount of health than all of the other classes, and they gain it at different rates. I should have explained that before, too. The armor that you pick up, every class gains armor at a different rate. It's not pick up one box of armor, get one point of health. Every class has a different multiplier. Some gain it faster than others, and in the case of the wing divers, I think theirs is something like... I'm literally pulling a number out of my ass here, but I'm going to say 0.75, maybe lower. So they generally have to collect that much more just to get one point of health. Kind of sucks for them, but it's not without its merits because, I mean, they're so damn fast. Anyways, the Wing Diver, as you can see here, carries two different weapons and a Plasma Core. This is, an, this is their power source, and it affects their power generation. Now, unlike the other classes, they have a jetpack, which basically pulls energy from their power core, from their Plasma Core. Their weapons are also energy-based, so you have to, to balance the use of your backpack versus your weapons. Different weapons will react differently to using weapon energy. For example, the rapier here is a battery-fed weapon, which means it has a battery inside of it that needs to be recharged. So even if your plasma core is run dry and is recharging, as long as you have power in the rapier's battery, you can still use it. Whereas other weapons, like the plasma cannon here, that is a you fire it and use power from the power core directly. So, they have all a wide array of, wep a wide array of weapons. Short-ranged, mid-range kinetic weapons, mid-range energy weapons, mid-range pulse weapons, long-range weapons, and uh, ranged weapons, and even homing weapons. I, we don't have any of those. So, the short-range weapons for the rapier, basically, it fires little short-range blasts of energy in a wide fan pattern. Yeah, that's pretty much the best way. It's like a mini flat gun, almost. Power Alliance is a little bit different. As you can see here, uh, where it says capacity for the rapier, it says 474. So I can fire 474 shots before it needs to reload. And it takes 26.3 points of energy. Now, assuming my backpack has 100 points of energy, it only costs a quarter of my power to recharge. It takes half a second. That's not bad. And the accuracy rating is G. Well, considering it has shots that can literally go straight up and straight down from the barrel, I'm not surprised its accuracy is G. 
This is the kind of weapon where you dive into a group of enemies, get real close, like shove it inside their mouth and pull the trigger. The Power Lance, on the other hand, as you can see, it only fires one shot at a time. It has incredibly high accuracy and a much smaller energy cost. Basically, this fires the same kind of short-ranged blast, but it's directly forward. Now, I'm going to stick with the rapier because, well, it's fun. And I want to show you what it looks like. Uh, the pulse machine gun, essentially, it is a pulse gun. It fires rapid-fire pulses of energy and then recharges. But, as you can see, it uses 126 energy to reload. I was never a big fan of the pulse weapons in the previous Earth Defense Force games, so I'll probably not be using them. As I had stated before, with a lot of the classes, there are certain weapons that I'm just not going to use because it would either not work because of the because it doesn't fit with my playstyle, or because I'm playing single player. In this case, this falls into the former category. It just doesn't fit with playstyle. Let's see, the closed laser. This is essentially it's a laser sniper rifle. Hmm. I don't think I'm gonna have need for it. But since we did earn it in the last episode, I might get it. When the plasma cannon is, it's a charged weapon. You pull the trigger and it fires a blast of energy that explodes. Since it does 85 points of damage and I only have 151 points of, uh, of health, if I'm not careful, I can kill myself. So we're gonna go with the closed laser. And then with the Plasma Core, this is the heart of the Wing Diver's aerial unit. It is a device for generating energy. The performance of the aerial unit varies uh, with equipped Plasma Core types. This is a pretty basic Plasma Core. High performance core can generate more energy than what is needed for flying. In addition, a powerful weapon requires higher energy, blah, blah, blah. So this thing has a maximum energy of 95.4. So, yeah, if I'd used that pulse weapon and reloaded, it would have drained my battery dry, partially reloaded, and then would have waited until my battery was completely full before sucking more energy out of it. Not a good thing to have. So, we're not going to worry about using that, but we have this. This is good. All right, so the only thing left to do now is to adjust the controls for the Air Raider. I get the Air Raider and Wing Diver names mixed up. I'll probably even s slap their names together in some weird ways. So if I do do that, please forgive me. I apologize. All right, Wing Diver controls. Now, attack L2, da 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 da. In this case, I actually do want L2 to be jump because this is my flight controls. As long as I hold down the jump button, I fly, which is what I want, which is a good thing to have. Now, uh, the boost thing, one thing that the Wing Diver can do is by hitting L3, I can quickly boost down to the ground to uh, land quickly. Uh, it does use energy, but essentially it's a way of avoiding aerial attacks and such. I'm probably not going to use it very much, but uh, I don't know, we'll see. I may end up incorporating it into my, my fighting style this time. But I'm pretty happy with how all this looks, so uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. With that, all of my controls are now set for the game. So we begin with Mission 4, Crisis in Base 228, Part 2. The base is under attack by hostiles and has turned into a battlefield. There is no guarantee for your safety even if you try to hide. Now grab your gun and fight. You have what it takes to be a soldier. Eh? What's that? So let's begin. Also, I just realized I accidentally did not. Whoops! <laughs> I accidentally didn't equip the rapier. Oh well. I will just 
play as the Wing Diver in the next mission, and next time, I'll actually use it. Sorry about that, folks. I really thought I had the right thing. Oh, I just realized another thing I could probably do. Uh, I can still change the controls mid-flight. I could probably... Yeah, why? since X is not used for anything, why don't I use X as boost? Uh, I should also mention, uh, when you actually start playing this game, when you're in a mission, the directional buttons don't work. That's what opens up your freaking emote menu, and it is nested as all hell. Oh no. Oh no. This weapon does not work the way I thought it would. The pylon came from the sky. That means the monsters also came from the sky. I did not realize that it was a charged weapon. Destroy the pylon. Attack. It's the device on the top part of the pylon that is calling in the monsters. We might be able to stop it if we attack. Hey, but the upper part of the pylons. It's not bad. Okay, so the plasma cannon continues to drain even at maximum. So, you know, don't don't continue. Awesome. Did it. Pylon could be destroyed by attacking the upper part. Okay. So, um not realizing how stuff works aside. Uh, this isn't going too badly. Oh, okay, so it's it's like an evasive maneuver, basically. I can even do it on the ground! Neat! Uh, is that- oh, shit, they're- oh. Well, that's not good. This is a follow-up report on the UFOs. Uh monster has appeared in the same area where a UFO was previously sighted. It is said to be 10 meters long, extremely aggressive, and will most likely attack humans. Stay tuned for more updates. So, the way a lot of enemy groups work is enemies will... it's a little bit like, um... it's a little bit like uh, enemy groups attack in XCOM 2. Yes, yes, I know. It's a little bit like the enemy groupings in XCOM 2. They'll basically... The groups will kind of wander around and do their own thing, but as soon as they're attacked, or you attack the thing that they're supposed to be defending, the pylon in this case, then they get all kinds of angry. Just overshot. That's okay. Okay, so she also gets that little white circle around her for grabbing items whenever she boosts, which is useful. Can't really see it up in the air though. Overshot it again. Okay. If I had released as soon as I was next to that light pole, that would have hurt. Low on energy. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I prefer using weapons that have batteries to them. Because there's no risk of me accidentally running out of power and, you know, not being able to fly. Damn it, I overextended my battery. I was not paying attention. That's exactly what I was trying to avoid. Once your battery runs out, just like Armored Core, uh, you gotta wait till it reach, fully recharges before you can use it again. So be careful. Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Ah, thank you, game. If the pylon falls into the city, it will cause heavy casualties. Not only casualties, the whole city will be gone. What is going on? What in the world are we fighting against? Giant this ants. Is more than an act of terrorism. Seriously? Does that mean we're at war with some country? This 
This is the world at war! Hey. Can't help it, I have to grab items. I see weapon boxes and my brain just goes... Next week. Just my luck. Well, my friend in Europe just told me that Marseille is being attacked by thousands of monsters. Are you saying that we're not the only ones being attacked? I see green boxes and my little monk, my goblin brain goes, pick up shining, do get it, yes. Well, shit. I don't know where that's going to land, but it's going to ruin someone's day. So keep it cool and don't start going around spreading rumors. Space. It was dropped from a giant flying saucer. We don't know any more details other than that. A flying saucer. Oops. But as long as I don't release the button, it'll 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 charge again, right? Yep. <laughs> I love it. This is a special news flash. I, I cannot switch weapons while I'm doing that. Ah, I hit my allies. They can be highly dangerous, so please act with extreme caution in case you witness these monsters. Do not make an attempt to approach and report to the authority immediately. Where are they coming from? Oh. Abandon the base. Evacuate now. We need to evacuate. I, you heard the man. I got a jetpack. See ya. Okay. Lots of new weapons. But next time, I'll make sure to actually equip the rapier so we can show it off and, you know, you see what it does. In fact, let's just quickly go through all of these. Let me, let me go ahead and... Let me go over there and actually adjust the equipment properly because I had originally intended, I had intended the rapier to be here as my primary and then the closed laser as my secondary. But we won't use that next time. Next time, what is this, a bolt gun? Oh, it fires electricity. Okay. Mag blaster is, that's a particle beam rifle. That's a laser gun. Laser gun. <laughs> we'll use that next time. Anyways, folks, that's going to be it for this episode. Wait, did I get the plasma cord? No, I didn't. That's going to be it for this episode. Next time, I will actually begin coloring all of the characters. So you, well, I'll just color all the characters. I don't know how I'm going to color them, but um, we'll see. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you. And uh, you all are just awesome people. Thank you for being patient with me waiting two long years for me to finally get my act together and start recording again. Thank you, and I'll see you again in the next episode.